What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to The Awakening World. It's our Wednesday night edition. I am Love Coach Scott Katamas, and welcome. Um, I'm really grateful for anybody who's watching. Um, of course, always appreciate our kind of closest friends and family, uh, and we really truly are a family. We're a tribe, and a lot of our favorite closest people are right here in the Zoom room with us. But I also want to welcome all of you who are watching on Facebook. Um, and the different uh, broadcast partners that we have. You might be watching us on Alan Steinfeld's YouTube channel, or our own YouTube channel for that matter. You might be watching on the Conscious Awakening Network or on Humanities Team, and most of you are watching on Facebook. So wherever and whenever, welcome. Also, a big hello to those of you watching the replay the recording, because I know a lot of our family watches us that way. Now, I'm going to start by sharing kind of the magic of community, the magic really of this great awakening world community, this global peace tribe that we're all a part of. And we all belong really to many different tribes, many different groups, and we're all coming together, coalescing. So uh, I originally had something completely different scheduled for tonight. And about a little over a week ago, um, I... Uh, the, the person, the people I was going to be working with, something came up and they had to cancel. And it was like, oh my God, I've only got a week to do something. And honestly, I thought, well, I guess I'll just have Omashar and I show some video clips from the past. That's kind of always the backup plan, right? And then uh, Michelle Anderson, who's one of my dearest favorite human beings on the planet, uh, reached out and said, Scott, did you get my voice message or my email from a few days ago? And I was like, oh, God, sorry, because I'm way behind on email. And I checked, and there's a voice message from her that I had completely missed. So um, I responded to her right away, and she said, you know, I was just wondering, is there any chance you could do um, something to help support this wonderful festival that Louisa Stowe and myself and some of my favorite people are a part of? And I said, you know, the only date I've got available is next Wednesday, July 19th. She said, we'll take it. We'll do it. Okay. Well, to continue the magic of this story, I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite people. She who gives the greatest hugs of all time. Um, <laughs> and this is, of course, Michelle Anderson. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Scott. Thank you so much for that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, I just love hearing your voice. I love being here. And really, I am so grateful to you, Scott, for bringing communities together. You are my hero for actually modeling what it looks like to be a conscious collaborator. There's never any competition. You're always there to 
to help, to support, to uplift and inspire. And I just knew you were the person to reach out to. And that day just, it, it, it really confirmed for me that synchronicity is a divine appointment with our creator or with the energies that are creational energies that are pulsing that let us know we're in the right place at the right time with the right people for the right reasons so that we can live and serve our divine missions on earth. And when you said that, you said, oh, what you did say, Scott, was this. Oh, no wonder why I had a cancellation. Right. And that's when I knew there's something here. There's something here because, you know, you, you've always said, I'm here, I'll help, you know, support you in whatever you're doing. And I've been running around um, kind of fragmented for, for a while now. I've had a lot on my plate emotionally, personally, and I'm here to support an incredible sister of mine who I really believe in. And I believe in her mission and I believe in her heart. And when Jen Berryhill reached out to me um, and said that she wanted to do this festival, that she had gotten it in a vision, she shared her vision with me and I immediately felt her heart. I felt so much pulsing through me that I knew I had to, I had to assist in whatever way I could. And I said, you have my support. I'll do the best I can with what energy I have. And Jen has been a role model to me of a very strong woman who has so much courage and so much heart and love and passion. And she really believes in ceremony. She, she, She's a sun dancer. She is now a moon dancer as well. She did her first moon dance ceremony recently. And Jennifer was, I would, I, I called her chief golden light eagles right arm with the star knowledge events. She coordinated a lot of his events for many years and she did a great job. And so, um, when she told me about Sunfire Fest, I said, I just really want to jump in and help. And that's what brought us here. And so behind the scenes, the magic that keeps presenting itself is, you know, we go through many emotions and it feels like initiations when you have an event that you're putting together that's not just a party. It's more of a heart call and a ceremony to bring healing and awakening to humanity and for mother earth our our relationship with mother earth and with each other is so important especially right now and so you know sometimes we get curveballs thrown at us and we were talking today on a meeting about having faith and putting our trust into our community and our mission and right after that call Jen texted our, our team with a, a surprise that, you know, knocked us all off our rocker. And I want her to share that with us so that we can bring the unseen seen, unseen into our awareness of what we think is transpiring and taking place. So Jen, I love you with all my heart. And I would like you to share what revealed itself today. Well, gosh, um, your intros and the way that you honor everyone that you meet as always, you know, for me, gets me very in my heart and feeling a little bit choked up in the moment just because you know how to make everyone feel so great. So thank you for making me feel so great in this moment and incredibly happy and honored to be in the space with such magical and powerful people in this community. So thank you for welcoming me, welcome, welcoming me <laughs> into your space tonight. And yes, it's a very auspicious kind of moment. We realized that, um, so Scott hosted an event, an online show um, to honor Chief Golden Light Eagle when he passed away in 2021. And it was, Michelle shared it with me. She said it was an incredible time of just honoring 
chief and everybody that got to speak, you know, sharing stories and experiences and having a really cathartic experience through that, that time together in honoring of his passing. And the way that this show tonight lined up, you know, we couldn't ignore that it was just this magical event that was suddenly like opened up for us to be here tonight. And I realized today it's the anniversary of when Chief Golden Light Eagle passed away. So July 19th of 2021 was when he dropped his robe and Scott Cadmus, you know, did this amazing honoring for him. And here we are on the exact same anniversary, you know, together in this container. And just, it's just, it fills my heart so full to bring that awareness in because Chief Golden Light Eagle has touched so many hearts and has really um, been a part of so many people's lives. And to be able to sit here tonight, knowing that he's here with us, as we're going to be sharing about something that he's very, very actively involved in creating from the plane that he sits in now. <laughs> and then I'm sure he's just giggling and has the biggest smile on his face, knowing that we're all here again. And um, he's supporting us on this next, what I like to call evolution of star knowledge. So really like what he did for humanity is so epic. and. It's my, in my heart calling and my mission to keep that moving forward. So my mission is to keep the star teachings alive. And so we'll probably share more about that later. But thank you so much for letting me be here with you tonight. And the magic continues, because to be honest, I went to Images Google, put in Chief Golden Light Eagle, and look at what I found. Are you all Aww. able to see that? <laughs> and so there you are with him. Um, and uh, and it's funny that that was like the first image that came up. Um, so um, so just honoring Chief Golden Light Eagle and his relationship to so many. You know, I clearly this is a being who both in life and now after life is guiding, connecting. One of those just great souls. He was on uh, my show Saturday Night Alive, the Global Peace Tribe. Uh, almost probably about three years ago. And he was just a delight. We had a wonderful show that he was on. So I did have a chance to get to know him a little bit that way. Um, and I believe you have one more person to introduce um, who's then going to share a little bit about uh, the chief and lead a meditation. Well, I'm very honored to introduce another sister that I just met through this endeavor. And Teresa Stone, when she jumped in and came on board, I felt my heart just explode with gratitude. And the way that you, Teresa, I'm watching how the sunlight or the, the light column is going through Jen's head. And then I was watching you seeing the sun coming through where you're standing there by that beautiful tree. And you, both of you just really light up the world with what you're doing. And Teresa, I have been witnessing you week after week as we come together and really, really strengthening our sisterhood and seeing how you light up every space you come into with the beautiful words that you speak. Your prayers are epic. Your, your heart is so filled with love. And, you know, we've talked about this event as being a galactic inspired and indigenous infused event. And what you've done is you've really brought our indigenous elders and ceremonialists to, to this event with such, you know, passion and beautiful hearts for the healing for the healing between all of our relations and for the upliftment and the honoring of Mother Earth. So Teresa, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I think you have a special surprise for us as well, right? Are you I muted? do, and thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Scott, for welcoming me here. And it, is so profound and beautiful how the love intelligence of the universe 
works and weaves through all of our lives. And when Christy Grace introduced me to Jennifer Berry Hill about coming in to hold sacred fire and bring forth the native you and Pueblo elders that walked upon these lands for long before we decided to have sunfire there. Um, I had goosebumps head to toe because I can feel the frequency of the codes of light that are going to be a transmission to all the people, the rainbow bridges who will be coming to this event and for that to be received directly to our mother earth. And that's what I, I am a stand for mother earth and humanity coming back into harmony with her and to gather in these sacred places with all of the different lineages to pray and to move forward from our past. I think we're ready on this step of evolutionary consciousness to integrate and receive these higher codes of light that we may move forward um, not forgetting what happened, but move forward from the, our extremely um, difficult past. And so I give thanks to you, Chief Golden Light Eagle. I know he's here with us supporting the call. I mean, I feel like I can just feel his shining presence and not only him, but he came, I feel he come, he comes with a whole fleet of angels and beings of love, light and benevolence because of the consciousness that he was connected to and with and still now. So this is, um, a, I'm so grateful and so honored to be welcomed into this event and to humbly um, facilitate and curate the space um, that is sacred fire and sweat lodge with our native elders here. So from the depths of my heart, thank you so much. Um, it's a huge testament to my prayers being answered of the healing and contribution I would like to be for this earth that goes beyond throughout all universes. So with that being shared, I would like to invite our entire community here. Greetings, so wonderful to meet you. I would like to invite us into some groundedness and a connection into our hearts so we can feel the frequency and the presence of the beings of love, light, and benevolence who are cheering us on as humanity who are here nestling us in their nurturing love as we're in this very expansive time in human evolution. So taking a deep cleansing breath, getting, giving thanks for the angel of air, for filling our lungs and connecting us with that eternal everlasting presence of all of creation. Ah, oh, releasing a cleansing sound of awe and really arriving back into your body. And wherever you're at is just perfect. Allowing your awareness of your roots from your tailbone to your knees and your feet. Digging into the cool, nutrient-rich soils of Mother Earth for we are her children. Allowing yourself to be held by that energy. Breathing up, acknowledging the wisdom that comes from our sacral. The connection to the sun of the galaxy we live in and the great central sun with our Dantian and celebrating the emerald green or whatever color it may be for you, vibrancy of your heart, 
and our intentions to live in a pure, beautiful way that honors all of life, with every thought, with every word, and every action, connecting that up to the gorgeous blue skies and our throat chakra. May our words speak life. May our words speak life. Rising to our third eye, may we see the vision for the highest timeline for humanity and hold that with unwavering faith and celebration. The victory is already won. And allowing our rainbow crown chakra to stretch up to the heavens, seeing our entire mind filled with light connecting us to our sun and the great central sun. Breathing deeply into the expansion of the stars and beyond. Just allow yourself to continue to expand, going beyond the beyond throughout this call in a way that feels good to you, anchoring into the core of Mother Earth and expanding out throughout and connecting with the galaxies that you may have arrived here from. Different times, different space, but it's all the same. And may you integrate that in a good way. And may you integrate this within your dream time. And if you are willing and ready to say yes to the gifts and the blessings of the higher codes of consciousness that come from your own family, your own lineages, transmuting and letting go the past that does not serve in this open gateway of light that we are being flooded with now. We give thanks to you, Mother, Father, God of all of creation. Thank you that we get to be in these bodies and be the rainbow bridges, the answered prayers of our ancestors. We stand here ready and willing with courage and faith to keep moving forward for the expansion of humanity and the healing of humanity's relationship with Mother Earth, taking our sacred responsibility of caring for her once again. We allow it to be, and so it is. Enjoy the expansion and come back to the groundedness of this call. I give my life into your hands I share my love across the land I show my trust and faith in you I know that you will lead me through We know that our world it is changing Faster than we can imagine we know that our days, they are numbered. This is our wake-up call. So let's live the dream we all share in. The one where there's love and there's laughter. Where people are open and caring. We are one. the land I show my trust and faith in you I know that you will lead me through look into your divine nature look into your lotus heart we are the new living masters we are the Come one and all to the party And drink of the holy water It's time to transcend limitation 
time to be truly free. I give my life into your hands. I share my love across the land. I show my trust and faith in you. I know that you will lead me through. Into your hands I share my love Across the land I show my trust And faith in you I know that you Will lead me through Omashar, that's a new one. Um, it's new to you today, brother. <laughs> I, I, have you played that before? I have, but uh, there's so much I kind of spaced really out, and so um, and this one just shouted at me to um, to be played today because it's about faith and trust yeah. and uh, showing that the, the divine light within us is leading us through. And uh, as Teresa just said, Teresa. Um, the victory, if you want to call it that, has already happened. We're just catch, kind of catching up with it. Mm. And so there we are for now. Thank I you. loved it. Hey, and a reminder, everybody, that all things Omashar live at his website, which is his name, omashar.com. And uh, that's where you can learn all about him. And we always encourage you, please buy his albums. And it's best to buy it from Bandcamp uh, because they're the most generous um, at, uh, at supporting him. So we love you so much, Omar Shah. And thank you, Scott. I don't really, as I was saying, I, was, I haven't heard the song before. So, but I'm good. Uh, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a new experience. So, yay. <laughs> you, and, Teresa, I'm going to bring you up for a moment. What a lovely, a lovely meditation. And I'm going to bring up um, your two sisters here. It so was long. beautiful, Teresa. There was a beautiful grounding meditation. And uh, because this is a lit, the song, which is called I Give My Life. Um, has a bit of beats after it in it. I thought, is this going to do anything? I said, yes, it's going to ground us. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, Mashar, that was so beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I feel your radiance, um, Teresa, really. And um, what Michelle and Jen were saying earlier about you, it's true. You light up <laughs> this room, my room, and I'm sure everybody who's watching, you're lighting up our room. So, thank you. Oh, thank you. That, that, oh. That's the beauty of you, Teresa, and just watching <laughs> watching it come through and feeling it. That's, I, I so appreciate the gift of the way that you put words together that actually penetrate our hearts and allow our hearts to open because we can feel what you're transmitting through those words. And when when we were in the green room before we went on air and Scott said, will one of you lead a meditation? Jen and I both went, Teresa, <laughs> she's the one that gets, I mean, you light us all up. So thank you. I think the audience is, is feeling the same. And thank you, Omashar, for that beautiful song. And I, I really was resonating and I looked down for a minute to try to do that social media thing and share with share it on my Facebook page so that they could catch all of this that's happening. You know, I thought I was sharing it on my page and Jen, I was sharing it on the Sunfire page because I'm, I'm still getting used to the whole social media thing when people make me an admin, but you know, it's, I always say that the technical side of things, it hasn't always been in my wheelhouse, but I'm open to learning. So this is a process that we're all in and just feels really good to be here with all of you and, and to be sharing our hearts together. 
Mm. Well, I'm going to put up for a moment um, the website for the Sunfire Festival because we're here to honor Chief Golden Light Eagle on the anniversary of his passage to the other side. And we're also here to support this amazing festival happening near Durango, Colorado and Aztec, New Mexico. Um, almost sure, by the way, is in Colorado. Um, so, of course, I'm going to put the link into the chat box, but for everybody watching elsewhere, it's really simple. It's sunfirefest.com. Sunfirefest.com. Um, and please tell us, ladies, about kind of how this all came together and what's going to be taking place at the festival. Yeah, I'm really excited about this, um, probably more now than, than ever, um, just because you can feel how incredibly powerful it is when we come together, even just in a space like this. But when we can do it in person with our feet on the land, you know, eye to eye, heart to heart, hand to hand, feet on Mother Earth, under the stars, under the sun, with the moon, just feeling all the beauty of the connection with ourselves, with each other, with the earth and every, all of creation. There's just something so potent and so magical and everything feels possible. And so this festival really has been a really, um, a vision and a dream come true in a lot of ways. It started years ago with doing ceremony with Chief Golden Light Eagle for several years. And, you know, I got to have the honor of creating conferences in partnership with Chief Golden Light Eagle. He started the Star Knowledge Conferences clear back in 1996. And we would do gatherings every year on 1111 to honor that portal and to honor the frequencies that are coming in at that time to really help ourselves um, and Mother Earth in her ascension process. And so I didn't even realize it at the time, but you know, a lot of what we would do in these conferences, and it incorporated the music, the dance, the natural medicine, the astrology, um, the, the food, everything, you know, the, we call them the five arts of harmony. And that's what really carried through as the core elements of what Sunfire Festival is going to be, are these five arts of harmony, which actually come through with some of the Star Knowledge teachings in the books that um, Chief Golden Light Eagle walked with and taught for those 25 plus years of, you know, his, his mission. And so Sunfire Festival is really about, you know, the connection to all that is and an incredible opportunity to receive information and to be in ceremony and have these amazing aspects to help with the integration of the wisdom and to activate the keys and codes that we all carry because we're all pieces of the puzzle and we're all bringing a magical gift that is so needed at this time. And one of the things that Chief would share is that your gifts are for the people. We can't hold on to them inside any longer. And so my, my love, my passion is ceremony. And it's also gathering like-minded, like-hearted people to come together to do the bigger work. And so um, that's kind of my gift. And it does take a lot of courage sometimes and requires me to be really brave and to be in a place of deep trust and faith pretty much nonstop. And that gets tested quite a bit. And I know it's because we're doing something so big <laughs> and it is going to have a massive ripple effect in the collective for the earth and for all of creation. And so, you know, it's come through, through vision and dream. And, you know, Chief Golden Light Eagle would always say, follow the dream, follow the vision. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm so blessed to have such amazing people on this production team with me, Michelle Anderson being one and Teresa Stone being one and Christy Grace, who is not here with us tonight, but holds a very, very big piece. And the theme that's really, really, really presenting right now is, is how the sacred feminine are getting we're calling back in our power. We're moving into this age of Aquarius. And everywhere you look, 
women especially are really coming online and it's really our time it's really our time to be in our medicines and to remember our ceremonies and so you know it's just this beautiful collective of really powerful goddesses that are holding this container with me with the support of the divine masculine as well and so we're watching all the 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 law of attraction really working and the people that are coming in that want to be part of this festival are really holding a big and bold light with us. And so I feel like I've said quite a bit. So I'm going to pass the baton over to whoever would like to jump in next. Thank I, you. I thank you so much for sharing that, Jen. And as you were as you were reflecting that, I was also thinking how much I would love to anchor that in because that's so big what you what you just said about how we're holding this together and it's so important that we honor that a lot of people are really doing a lot of work right now there are so many people coming together and doing festivals or ceremonies or conferences and there some of the other star knowledge family are doing events um chief golden light eagles daughter, I think might be doing an event. I think it's 11-11 in South Dakota. They, they build on each other, right? Where the family comes together and that we all work together to um, leap, leap pad from one to the next to the next to keep building this container, this energy for all our relations in Mother Earth. And Teresa, um, I know that you you uh, aren't with us for the whole 90 minutes of this program. And I'd like to get you to share about the, the indigenous elders that have been drawn to this festival and what they've shared with you and, and what your vision is for the, the wiping of the tears ceremony and for the, the fire keepers and what they've shared with you and what they plan on doing with us as well. And you're there on the land. You're, you're at, Tico Time Resort a lot, it seems like. So if you can share a little bit about what the land has shared with you as well and the water. Yes, I would be happy to share. The very first event that happened on this land was a transmission for the healing of rivers everywhere. That those rivers can be honored in there divine feminine flow and be able to run free to grandmother ocean. The rivers represent the feminine essence on this planet and they have been dammed, diverted, polluted. Um, the Colorado is piped over to Las Vegas for a water show instead of reaching Grandmother Ocean. And we have stolen that from its original people in Mexico. We took away their river and their children have not been able to fish with their grandfathers there. And so what is miraculous is in the prayers for the rivers to reach Grandmother Ocean, which is um, the biggest prayer that I hold in my heart. As of 2014, they released the river in a pulse and the river returned back to Grandmother Ocean through her native lands of Mexico. And all the children came to play in that water. And because of agreements between Mexico and America, that river is now allowed pulse flows, which has restored this river. The Animus River is one of the only rivers that's sovereign, that isn't dammed or blocked. And it runs from the right here in the headwaters of the Rocky Mountains, right alongside where we are all gathering, right, right in the middle of where we are all gathering. And she is vibrant and beautiful and her pathway back to grandmother ocean as of 2014 has been restored. And that means so much to me. I was born on that river, on the Animus River. And she runs into the San Juan and then into the Colorado. 
So that is an example on how when we do our own healing, the mother heals. And as we put the mother first, we heal. And so as a move into action on the mother's behalf, I have been called to this land and have called forth the wolf child clan and Nathan Strong Elk and his family and the wolf childs and I have been in companionship for over 20 years doing transformational work, a program called Tioshpe, which is a six month look at your life and what you get to take responsibility for and move forward in a powerful way. And that's what we're doing. Um, they have just spoke to their family after they, after Sundance in their Lakota ways to bring forward their relative who was excited to hear about what we're doing and would like to come and participate to offer a wiping of the tears ceremony. And this was brought forth by Crystal Wolfchild. She's my dear sister and she's a mother that it is time to acknowledge and to give the true history of what's happened to the First Nations people and have a collective transmission of forgiveness, really acknowledging what happened here. Also, setting those who came as perpetrators who, had, who did that, and whose ever name it was, that they were also perpetrated, that their villages were also raided. And it has a perpetual path of killing and conquering and darkness that our ancestors have walked through. And so what we feel it's time to acknowledge is that it's time to get the original history, the real history out there, which Sheldon Wolfchild has, is working on his third documentary. And Della Romero Wolfchild is his wife and his daughter, Crystal Wolfchild, are dear family to me. And um, they are of Pueblo, Ute, and Lakota, and Spanish descent. And so their work that they're doing on the planet is very powerful. Sheldon walked from the Dakotas all the way to Washington in 1950s or 70s, forgive me for not knowing the exact date, as a stand to preserve their ceremonies. So they have been standing for their people, their sovereignty, their rights, and human justice for a long time. And they will be the native people who will be here holding community council around a sacred fire that will be burning for three days straight, alongside with medicine chief and Ute tribal member, Nathan Strong Elk and his beautiful family, uh, who will be blessing the land and singing songs to the ancestors there because they believe in us coming together in our oneness, acknowledging the hurts of the past and powerfully moving forward shoulder to shoulder, no more separation. So this is a big thing that's happening. This ceremony is usually done in personal groups, if a family has um, is grieving a member going to the other side. Um, and what we're feeling is that this, whoever feels called uh, will join us for a group transmission of acknowledging the hurt, asking for forgiveness, extending that forgiveness, and acknowledging that it was hurt people who created more hurt. And I think we're ready to acknowledge this and move forward into our 
higher potential as humanity and take back our rights to live in harmony with one another and disarm the forces that are continually continuing to stir up war to kill one another for resources uh, because lack is a lie and it's it's time to really take our our responsibility back to protect the air the earth the water and the fire and so that is what we are doing at sunfire festival um, there's going to be a very multi-dimensional sacred space being held both in lodge and around the sacred fire at the base of the mother tree this probably close to a thousand year old cottonwood tree maybe 800 if not a thousand years old she is ancient and she is here to witness all of this as well on behalf of the mother and behalf of the but on behalf of all universes that are healing is going to bless and send that signal out through all the universes. Wow. That really, that really paints a picture and there's, there's so much that resonates with, with so many of the people that I'm sharing this with that how important this work is that we, we really share deep listening and acceptance and coming into the knowing that we're all one family. We're the human family. And we, ha we have a mother, mother earth to thank for our existence as we walk upon her. May we walk gently upon her and also coming back into the remembrance that life can be a dance and a celebration. And when we experience joy together, that we are uplifting and we are helping with that spiral of evolution that's happening that wants us to come together and to unite and to celebrate our differences rather than let them divide us. We, we get to come together with each other. And what a, what a beautiful venue, what a beautiful location that I feel was truly a gift, a divine appointment that we all landed together. And I have great respect and reverence for what is taking place right now. And it, you know, one of the things that I've been sharing with a lot of our groups lately on, on my radio show, on Awakening Code Radio, we've been talking about this um, as well, that the times we're living in are an invitation for us to dig deeper, to do our internal work and to come back to the knowing that we're here to live in service with each other for each other and to find those opportunities to display kindness and love and compassion for each other and for mother earth and what i've been seeing playing out what many of us have been seeing playing out is we're given we're being given opportunities to look at our relations with each other how do we how do we speak with each other? Do we come at each other with tension and anger or can we come at each other with love and compassion even if things are crunchy or challenging or chaotic or you know whatever may be happening? I know that when I look around at all the different things and that are happening and all the different groups of people that I know, we all have stories of hardship and strife mixed in with miracles and magic. And I invite us all to consider how we can come together and create more of that beauty, more of that faith and trust and joy as we walk through these times. This is a pretty powerful time to be alive, to be on earth right now. So I also wanted to, you know, something came to me while we were all talking is that some people may want to be with us in person and may not be able to be there, whether it's a health challenge, whether it's, you know, destination and getting there. And I have an invitation for anyone who wants to be there that can't be there. 
there's an opportunity to pay it forward for somebody who does want to be there and who might not have the means to get there, but has the passion to be there. And that person may be able to carry your energy and your spirit with them to get there. I had a, a, a friend last night who came on our radio show. We were talking about a new movie that's out called Love Heals. I, I highly encourage everybody to find this movie, Love Heals. And it's pretty powerful. It talks a lot about our pain body and our stored trauma. And forgiveness is a big key compo component to our own healing, forgiving ourselves, especially. Um, and the, the woman who was with us, Shaman Isabella said, Michelle, my 17 year old grandson would love to be there. And I want to pay to send him there to be a volunteer to help. So I, I'm extending that as uh, an invitation that you may know somebody that wants to be there, even if you can't, and just encouraging all of us to think about that in terms of adding energy to this event, because we're, it, it's going to take each one of us to rise through these times. And I, Scott, I know that you're doing that with all of your communal events and inviting people to come to the different events that you're having. Deborah Juicy is doing that. So many people are coming together for the greater good for all. So thank you for painting that beautiful picture. Both of you, Jennifer, Jen, my Jen Berryhill and Teresa, I think we really have an idea of what is being co-created here. And it's from, from the deep space in our hearts. Well, there's another amazing thing. You talk about Love Heals. I hosted the world premiere of Love Heals at the <laughs> Illuminate Film Festival. Um, I got to know the two gals, you know, the, both the woman who made the movie. And Dana and Chris, uh, Chris Ann. Dana and Christiana. Chris they're Chris awesome. Ann. I've had meals with them. They've been on this show three times now. I love um, it. Because I kept bringing them back because I love their story. Yes. And who they are. They're just exquisite women. So here we go. Another synchronistic event. Another amazing. There it is, you know. So, um, yeah, Love Heals is a beautiful, beautiful film, and they're two beautiful souls. And they're making now a new movie about um, equestrian healing, uh, which I'm sure will end up uh, premiering. So, Jen, we haven't heard from you for a little while. Um, and of course, you know, Teresa, what you share has been so beautiful, so dynamic. Uh, but I'd love to turn it over to Jen to share a little bit more about your vision for the festival or what you would like people to know. And I will put into the uh, chat box again. Oh, I think, Teresa, do we need to say goodbye to you? Is this where you're riding off into the sunset? It is. Bye for now. And really pray for ease and grace on everyone's travels for whoever is feeling called to join us there. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. Much love to each and every one of you. Thanks for being with us. God bless you. Uh, we love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Mm -hmm. mm. Jen, what do you want to share about the festival um, or even about more memories of uh, Chief Golden Light Eagle as, the, as his light? I'm just imagining it's his light coming down onto your head right now that we're looking at. <laughs> well, I definitely feel his presence. And as as Teresa was sharing, um, you know, it's moving past the separation and moving into unity and what that will require from all of us. And, you know, really being brave enough to to do the healing that is needed. And sometimes that's that's really intense, deep work. And it's, it's deep and, and intense because it's so ancestral and it runs very long and deep in, into our bloodlines. And so, you know, I, I was so happy when Crystal Wolfchild brought up wanting to make that transcendence beyond the generational trauma so that there's an opportunity for us to then step into our generational medicine. And so um, 
you know, it just really vibrationally shifts what's possible when we can really give ourselves permission to look at what's really possible. And, you know, as she was sharing it, I was reminded, um, I was a sun dancer at the Sundance with Chief Golden Light Eagle in 2021, um, right before he made his transition. And that ceremony, we saw the four directions come together. It truly was an all nations Sundance. And we realized it was like, a, in a way, it was a big celebration as though we did it. We're, we're bringing the, the, whole, the wholeness of humanity back together again. And so I, I felt it was important to share that for whatever reason that was coming through just now. And um, I think it ties in really well with what Teresa was sharing, you know, just the power of forgiveness can do so much for us and really level us up into a new plane of love and harmony and unity. And so like the unity, harmony, truth, and freedom are aspects of what we call the five arts of harmony. And unity, harmony, truth, and freedom are the energies that circulate in our chakras, our top chakras. So from the heart to the throat, to the third eye, to the crown, love, light, unity, harmony, peace, and truth, and freedom are like these virtues within us that um, we have permission to tap into because they're portals. Like those portals within our chakra systems are what opens us up to that full connection to all that is here and multidimensionally. And so um, I just love that we're going to have this opportunity to gather in such a beautiful place. And, and, you know, I'm learning more and more as Teresa, Teresa shares more about Tico time, which is the venue for Sunfire Fest. And she mentioned it's, you know, it's right on the Animus River. And this, this resort is just incredible with everything that it offers. But, you know, it's the river with this, the stage is set on like a beach. And then that butts up against this beautiful mountain. So it's like where the, where the mountains meet the beach. And, you know, I've gotten to experience some time there and the sky gazing at night is just, it's so incredible. The connection that you feel to the stars and the sun and the moon while your feet are on the earth with the water, we'll have the fire, you know, the beautiful breath of air. And, um, you know, I just, I feel like all of these components are showing us what's possible within us you know, bringing back those deep remembrances. And a lot of times when we're doing ceremony, it is to activate the remembrance. And boy, do we have a lot to remember. And it's time to not remember the traumas and the pain and let that lead us or, or stop us. And instead, you know, lean in to the beauty of all of creation around us so that we can really embody the realities that we wish to, to be in moving forward. And so um, Sunfire Fest, it also culminates with the vision of what's coming up next year. Um, we're going to be experiencing a total solar eclipse in April of 2024. And within the Star Knowledge teachings, there's a messenger called Saturnalia. And Saturnalia brings forth the message that um, basically tells us that within these blinkings of my eye, we are in a point of initiation. And so it feels like everything that everyone's doing right now, whether it's Sunfire Fest or what, what other festivals and events and, and gatherings that are all taking place, it's gathering the people together to do bigger work as we're preparing for what's to come with this next explosion and expansion of consciousness that is likely going to be coming in with that total solar eclipse next April. And so, um, you know, the teachings say, prepare for those initiations because it's going to have an effect on us as well as on mother earth, but all of the galactic aspects that are around us because they're actually looking to us they're watching us and they're they're seeing how are we going to do this and we're really at a pivotal point in humanity how how it's going to play out 
And so um, I'm just encouraging anybody that feels that call to be part of this amazing shift that we're facing and, and really come bring your medicine and your love. And, and if you can't be there, you know, do it through your intentions because we will feel it. And we're bringing something really powerful to the next seven generations. So thank you. Beautiful. Um, well, you know, I think what we'll do next is there's one of my favorite people. Uh, I've, I've Several favorite, favorite people, I must say. Uh, Michelle Anderson is one of them. I'm going to bring Michelle up because guess who else is going to be at this festival? Larissa Stowe. Larissa is going to be there. And yeah. we love Larissa Stowe. Um, uh, she wasn't able to be with us tonight, but I uh, pre-recorded, Michelle, uh, an interview with her. Um, and I want to play that. Um, and uh, she updates a little bit about what's going on with her. And of course, she talks about uh, the festival. Is there anything you want to say about Larissa before I start this, uh, this pre-recorded video? I just want to say that Larissa is so filled with love and so much a community builder. She, she, I have a sense she might be talking about that and whatever you recorded with her. But as soon as we asked her if she wanted to join us for this, she has said yes to every single thing we've asked, every single thing, whether it's helping to promote or being on an interview. You know, we, we've we worked a lot with Sheila Seppi with uh, Conscious Awakening Network. And you mentioned Conscious Awakening Network as one of the networks, one of the platforms I think you said you, you collaborate with, right? Mm -hmm. um, she is going to be there with her film crew filming this event because oh, she wow. felt the heart, heart, heart call to be there. She feels what's happening as well. And uh, so she, Larissa came on with Sheila. We, we spend every Monday night in June having talks with Sheila as well on Cosmic Conversations. So what I feel so much, there's, there's such a depth in my heart about how we're all collaborating with each other. And I even see in the audience, Connie, Connie is in the audience, Connie, Connie and Andrew have been on Awakening Code Radio, and I just love their book about the, the trust frequency. There they are. Oh my gosh, a married couple. I get to see you as a married couple. And I just love them so much. And I love watching that. You know, I saw their name on here and got so excited to know that you're on with us tonight as well. And, you know, I met Connie at, uh, at an event in Connie and Andrew both at an at an indigenous inspired event where I, I think Chief Golden Light Eagle was there. I know Chief Phil Lane was there and and Bavado was at that event too in Sedona. And it, it's it just warms my heart to know that this is continuing, that we're feeling how important this healing taking place is to the evolution of humanity and to all of us coming together. So Scott, thank you for inviting uh Larissa to do to come on with us as well and she said she would have been here live but she was willing to do the pre-record and I'm curious to see what she had to say as well okay here is our beloved Larissa Stowe we're with Larissa Stowe and we haven't seen her for a few months because she has been busy creating an amazing place where we will inevitably have a global peace tribe retreat uh, near Sedona, Arizona. So let's just start right away, Larissa. Tell us how are things going with Shiloh, your 12 acres out in Cornville. Well, I am like, I'm beyond excited, Scott, about Shiloh. The, the land is even more beautiful now than when we first looked at it. We have like this humongous area of beach now. Like when we first, when I first looked at it, it was all filled with like really, really high vegetation. It was hard to get down to the water, you know, and it was kind of muddy on the way down. I remember that. And because we had, do you remember? Yeah. Well, now that we, it was, it was, it was a little challenging, but now that there's been a hundred year flood, the amazing part is like, yeah, there was a hundred year flood. It was, it was insane in the spring. Um, but the awesome part is I was like, gosh, what, how do I get a beach in here? How do I get sand in here? 
and Mother Nature came and she completely like took out all that vegetation right down at the front during the flood and all like a lot of dead wood, you know, that had accumulated, took that out. And so when we came back, Doug was like, you're not going to believe this. He's like, you have to come and see this loss. So I like walked down there and it's like this ginormous area of red sand beach that we have at Shiloh. It is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Oh. It is so you're, magical. You're, you're, Scott. <laughs> your whole relationship with that property is so magical. The way you found it, the way it found you, the timing of it. I mean, you were talking about, well, we're looking for something in Sedona and then boom, it happened. And having tracked you and this whole process, it really is one of those beautiful stories of how just so in the flow, this massive thing of buying 12 acres and building a retreat site, but it's been in such beautiful flow for you. And here's another chapter in that flow. Yeah, it's, it's really, really magical. Um, we have like lightning bugs at night. We've got these, these big frogs, the bullfrogs that make these really like they they don't even sound like a bullfrog it's it's incredible like the sounds that they make it's like uh, uh, uh. it's like these sounds sounds like a moose is coming but it's actually these gigantic bullfrogs and like the crickets and it's just it's incredible so all of that's awesome um we were expecting to be completely ready to go by now and construction things have happened that I won't go into, but a lot of things have slowed that process down. So, you know, the baby has not birthed. She has not come out of that birth canal yet. We got some more contractions. <laughs> We've had some contractions, but she's on her way. And well, I'm, I made a commitment to Zenka Caro to participate in a big thing she's doing in September in Sedona. So I will look forward to coming and seeing you at Shiloh, hopefully in September. That would be fantastic. I would love to have you. Yeah, she should. She should be ready. But, you know, <laughs> like that knock on wood, right? Something will be ready. Something will be there. Um, all right. Let's talk about this new festival that you are one of the featured uh, core parts of. Tell us about the Sunfire Fest and uh, the location that you're familiar with. Well, I'm, I'm super excited about this festival. It is like, it's, it's between like Aztec, it's like right in Aztec, New Mexico, um, Durango, Colorado area. And it's at a resort, like a, a camping resort called Tico Time. And they have zip lines, they have beautiful, like this beautiful body of water. Um, it's, it really, really feels good there. So Shakti Tribe played there at the Serenity Festival in October. Mm -hmm. And um, now Jen Barrymore is, I know, is on the show tonight, right? Yep, um, <laughs> she's, she's watching this right now, no Right doubt. now, you know, <laughs> she is like the mastermind and, and the divine feminine energy to help really birth this beautiful festival. And it's really exciting. It's like, it's, it's, has a lot of energy around ritual and you know bringing the different um indigenous indigenous people together and you know it's just really seeped in the energy of of ritual and, and connection and connecting to the earth so i am super excited that shakti tribe gets to be you know a part of this and we get to kick off the festival with our music and help raise the vibration, be a part of that. Because as you know, I like, I really, really love to bring people together and just to really bring people into their bodies and movement and dance. And, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to that with this beautiful group of people that, you know, this beautiful alchemy that's coming together. And we are after talking to you, we're going to play one of your favorite, one of our favorite videos of you. Um, so people are going to get a chance to hear you sing and play. Um, mm -hmm. And tell us uh, a little bit more about Shakti Tribe for anybody who's watching for the first time and the Weevolution. All right. Well, Shakti Tribe is my band and just a wonderful family 
um, my beautiful Shakti family. I love and adore. And, you know, we are really kind of an East meets West with, you know, the, we fuse mantra and peace prayers and we go from being really soft and intimate and I love to bring everybody together, you know, so that we're really together and people experience one another like up close and personal to really ecstatic, you know, and feeling into that energy of release and letting go. So it's like we're, you know, we, we take ourselves, I would say, because we love to do this. And um, our audience is on like a magic carpet ride of experience, of experiencing, you know, themselves, all the different aspects of who we are. Um, so, yeah, we get really rocking, but we also get really soft and introspective. So it's that it's, it's all of it, yeah. kind of like how we're all of it. I'm very full spectrum. I love that about you. I love that about who you are as a being and certainly about your music. And something again that I love about you and your creation, you make wonderful creations, you create music, you create babies, you create Shiloh baby. Um, and you also created the six agreements of yeah. the revolution. Uh, and of course, we did an entire show on that. Um, and I'll put into the chat box as you speak of uh, the link to those six agreements. But please um, just refresh our audience a little bit about the revolution and the six agreements that I'll be posting right now in the chat box while you speak. Well, the, the Weevolution for me is, I mean, it, it has been an ongoing um, unfolding, instead of saying evolution, I like to say Weevolution, because it's really has been uh, an exploration of how we can come together with like minds and, and like hearts, and even more so the heart, I would say, and linking, you know, linking those hearts, linking hands, linking arms together and focusing on what we want to create together with play, um, fun, enjoying each other. Like, where are we going? What do we want to focus on? And in the evolution, it's really about uplifting, you know, our consciousness, uplifting humanity, truly embodying these ideas you know, these concepts and ideas about a new earth that we've been talking about, you know, for a long time, but actually being that. And so the six global agreements, the evolution are six different agreements that really help. That. They're based in, I don't know if you want to talk at all about that, just a, a titch. Do you want me to touch yeah, on absolutely. it? Like the evolution, really, the six? Yeah, the six agreements are like the charter for the awakening world. It's like, as we go through the birth canal into an awakening world, I feel like you've really identified six fundamental values, six fundamental principles, if you will, for us to live by. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, and this, by the way, this is, I would say there, this wisdom has always been here, obviously. It's just, it's so much easier when we take like these, these fundamental wisdoms that make all the difference and we put them into a discernible form that together we can look at and we can go, okay, we agree upon these wisdoms and working with these wisdoms with one another um, in life. And the first one is plugging into source daily, like daily plugging into source. And, and for me, source is love. It's unconditional love. So whatever source is, you know, for you and um, feeling into what that is. And to me, it's love. So for me, I do my breath work every day. I do my Wim Hof breath every single day. Every day I ride the dragon, which is a moving meditation that helps, that truly supports embodiment and um, creating a bigger container for the electrical current of the Kundalini awakening. Um, but it's also in like that incorporates forgiveness work because we have a lot of that to do with one another. Um, that's agreement number one. Agreement number two is cultivating um, courageous vulnerability. So <laughs> that we really give ourselves permission to be completely authentic in how we show up, even those of us who, who are leading in different ways, because in the past, we've experienced our leadership is always looking like we have it together. And I think it's really important for this new earth for us all to just 
allow ourselves to be vulnerable, which creates deeper intimacy with ourselves, mm -hmm. with each other and trust too. When we're vulnerable, then we begin to trust each other because we, we kind of know that something's up when we're not being fully authentic. It, it doesn't um, afford that space for us to be as authentic. Um, so that's agreement number two. Agreement number three is leading um, with compassionate curiosity and cultivating that um, compassionate curiosity in life and, and really leading with that, you know, leading with that curiosity. And when we do just being curious with one another rather than jumping to conclusions, which we tend to do with each other, tend to project because of our own woundings in our own life that we've gone through. So when we're curious, then we begin to understand each other more, you know, when we lead with curiosity. Um, number four is practicing radical self-acceptance, really loving, you know, loving the parts, not only the parts that we love about ourselves, but beginning with accepting the parts that maybe we have shame around so that we begin to transmute that shame. So if I, if I have a belief, a limiting belief that I am not smart, let's say, or that I'm not good enough, having compassion for that part of myself, that it's okay that I, that this is coming up rather than trying to change it, make it wrong. Instead be like, it's okay. It's okay that I feel like I'm not good enough right now. It's okay that I don't feel like I'm smart enough. I completely love and accept myself. I understand that that comes and it goes. Those feelings come and go. I like to say like the river that flows through the infinite because I am the infinite. So it's that it's, it's working with tools that help us to really accept ourselves, radically accept ourselves. Um, number five is respect each other. And by presenting that, it's just that awareness that we're not going to um, dehumanize each other or objectify each other. We may not agree. We may have different beliefs from one another. And I hope we do so that we can learn from each other, right? We can grow in different ways. And that to be okay. In fact, that to see it as necessary that we look at things in different ways. And rather than making each other wrong and going, you're you're wrong, I'm right, you're bad, you're evil, I'm good. These people are good, you're not, because you believe differently, which is dehumanizing and objectifying. Instead, we say, you know what? I'm gonna respect that you see things differently. I may not agree with you, but I wanna understand, and so I'm gonna respect that there's different ways of showing up and being, that God has many different ways of expressing itself, um, many different fractals right of consciousness right. and number six which is my favorite um out of the six is play together you know like yeah. get out there, right it's just like have fun create you know make stuff up like you know awakening world it's like this was a vision from you and deborah right and then together the two of you came together to create this this show, this was your creation. You played together and look at all of us playing with you now. Right? Yeah, absolutely. We're yeah. in your sandbox yeah. and we're enjoying it with you. Right? So, <laughs> you know, miracles happen when we play together. And if we focus on playing together and how we can create from, a, from the energy of play rather than to do and the goals and all of that, you can still create just as much as you would with your goals if you look at it from the perspective of, wow, well, how can we play and enjoy each other as we are creating in life? Wow. So those, I believe, I truly believe from the deepest you know, part of my soul, that these six global agreements, and I say global rather than just, you know, personal is because it's like, how do we do this together? Like these are agreements about the we space. The and I believe each tribe absolutely and here has accepted. These are the global agreements and there's the document. And this is what I've put into the chat box, everybody, as she was talking, there's the document, you can save it. And I really encourage all of you to save this and you know, post it up, periodically review it. How are you doing? 
with each of these six beautiful agreements. Um, um, and yeah, we all are learning to respect each other, to honor ourselves, to play together. And we all hope that some of you are going to be able to go play with Louisa Stowe at the Sunfire Fest. Um, Louisa, I apologize. I've got to pack up and get uh, to my next Awakening World. I'm actually recording this on Saturday afternoon, and I'm yes. to the Awakening World at the Haven, uh, where we're going to be doing all of the Saturday night shows from starting tonight. Wonderful. So changes, which our audience just heard about. Um, but thank you so much for being with us uh i'll see if i can make it out to sunfire first we'll see um hey. out, yeah, but it sounds awesome and thank wonderful you such a beautiful part of the awakening world we love you so so much and we're going to roll right into a larissa stowe video here yes we are we're going to do a larissa stowe video and what i have chosen from the vaults is Larissa, as you know, Michelle, has been on the show many times, but there was a time that I was actually at Shiloh with Omar Shar and the Global Peace Tribe. And so here is Larissa Stowe and Omar Shar playing music together um, for the first time. And it was very spontaneous. Omar Shar, is there anything you want to add about this experience? You know, no, nothing, nothing to add there, Scott. It's it was just a beautiful experience as it was, and Larissa, holy smoke, you know you you feel her through this Zoom medium, but you get next to her and your whole being lights up, and you, and you go, wow, this is who you are. Well, this is who I am, and I and I just even speaking about her, I'm just feeling so enlivened, and the cells of my body are just going yes. <laughs> so, words get in the way let's just play the video and it was a beautiful moment and the difference between shallow then and the shallow in september october i'm sure will be chalk and cheese so all right all right here we go Oh! 
That's a sweet and fun memory, I gotta say. I'm gonna bring Olashar back up. He's shy, but what's it like for you uh, watching that video, Olashar? Well, I tell you, I was cringing, but um, but <laughs> that's just the um, <clears throat> the Brit perfection in me because the 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 feeling of the vibe that was there was phenomenal. We were only in our hearts, and it was just so joyful. <clears throat> and that's the closest I'll get to almost lip syncing next uh, to um, her. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> apart from that, it was great. Apart from me cringing, it was great. Thank you. <laughs> I, I love the monk in the back, and the whole time well, he, did, he was phenomenal. Smiling and in his Buddha nature and he oh, was that the monk of the whole it, it was <laughs> phenomenal just just to the right of where which wasn't being shown on the screen was this huge um altar with a gazillion durgas and um and uh, hanuman's and um the elephant dude and everything just there it was a beautiful Ganesha. 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 sorry elephant dude and uh <laughs> yes it, it, it was a beautiful experience, and I'm sure there's going to be something even more beautiful uh, arising. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, that, was, that was great. I really enjoyed it. And everything that Larissa shares is just so uplifting and heartfelt. And I, I love how Connie was chiming in with, you know, it. it's so resonant with what Connie and Andrew's um the, ten the, plus frequencies. the trust frequencies, 10 assumptions and their dance of the souls online course. So there's Connie. Know. I just brought you on Connie since we're talking about you. And I agree the trust frequency, their concept in those 10 agreements, you know, it's like everyone's getting the future, you know, they're getting the future through their own filter, through their own unique perspective. 
you know, and there's a little twist here and a little twist there, but it's really, we are creating the new paradigm. I remember I was interviewing Michael Beckwith before Awakening World. This was a, when I was interviewing him for television shows. This is like 20 years ago. And I said, you know, what about, what do we do? He said, don't worry about the world falling apart. Our job is to create the new paradigm. Our job is just, the world's going to do what it's going to do. Don't get caught up in the drama. Just work on creating the new paradigm in your own unique way. And that's what Connie's doing, what Michelle's doing, what Jen and Omashar are doing, what Larissa is doing, uh, whether it's the six global agreements, which are brilliant, or Connie's trust frequency, which is brilliant, or Michelle doing 10 plus years of your radio show, or Jen spontaneously putting together this festival, you know? Such incredible times. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting text messages while we're on here from people that are feeling the energy and tuning in. And it's a message that is so resonant with so many people right now that we, we all want to belong. We yeah. really want to feel like we are united and, and that there is some hope for the future and that we are the future and that our children will have a future and that's really the indigenous teachings that that the indigenous ways are the ways that lead us through these times and it's time for us to remember truly remember who we are why we're here what are we doing here and to remember that love is the most important thing that we can share right now our love and our kindness and our gratitude and thank you to each one of you for being here tonight it it really it really lifted my spirits. You know, I've had, I've had a couple of rough days and yet through it all, there's just so much gratitude for everything we have to look forward to. So I want to thank you all. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Omashar. Thank you, Connie, for being here, my sister. It looks like Connie's going to be really busy going to Chicago at the Parliament of World Religion. She's going to be on a panel with our dear friend, Sandy Hart. And then it looks like, Connie, are you going to Australia? In f you're you're gonna go to Australia to, to tune in with the Aboriginal wisdom. This is our mission. Uh, yeah, for our new film, In Search of the Future 2, The Only Way Out is Up. Uh, our first film was with the Bushmen of the Kalahari and this one is going to be with the uh, Aboriginal folks from Australia. And uh, I'll put a link to our teaser in the um, chat, to our teaser to a new film, Scott's in the teaser. And um, yeah, we're full tilt boogie bringing the only way out is up to higher consciousness and, and visions of, and catalysts for people to take and put into their lives and change how we think, how we do things and let that emergent future come and, um, be what we can't even fathom it is ultimately. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Well, I want to make a couple of quick announcements. One more time, everybody. Uh, let's all support the Sunfire Fest. And again, it's really easy to do that. Go to sunfirefest.com, sunfirefest.com. There is a special uh, discount. Um, for our Awakening World family, uh, you can get a discount by using the code Awaken Sunfire. Awaken Sunfire. If you can't make it, buy a ticket or two for somebody less fortunate. Um, and uh, don't go away because we're going to have Omashar music and hopefully some Eleanor Joy and Ian dancing, maybe others getting up and moving and grooving to the music. My dog is probably going to join us because she's got that mom dad energy going. I also want to let people know that we've got two really special events coming up this week um, on The Awakening World. Tomorrow night, we have a very special event live from the Haven in Ashland, Oregon. I will be there, good God willing. Um, uh, we've got Chad Wilkins. And Chad, you may remember him. Some of you are old timers. You might remember him from being on Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe a couple of times. He's awesome. He is the mystic minstrel, and he's going to be doing a live concert. So we will come on at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. 
I will put into the chat box the link of how you can come into the Zoom room. I also emailed just now to everybody, all of our subscribers, the link um, to the Zoom room. So you can come in to the Zoom room and join us at six o'clock. We'll start the show as usual. We'll have a couple of Omashar songs. I'm going to chat with Chad. We'll have a meditation. And then Chad will roll into the concert, just like we did last week with Kristen Hoffman. He'll be playing live to the audience and online for our awakening world. And on Saturday night, it's going to be an amazing awakening world show. Uh, we have got just um, celebrating Mary Magdalene. And you know, Eden Amadora, who is a dear friend, I had dinner with her last night. She just got back from France, where she was leading a retreat dedicated to Mary Magdalene in France, visiting all the locations where uh, Mary Magdalene was in a cave and the, the river where the um, the holy waters in Lourdes. Anyway, she's got a lot to share and she's carrying that vibe. We also have probably the true top scholars in the world on Mary Magdalene joining us. Um, Marguerite Rigoglioso and Elizabeth Kelly um, will be with us on Saturday night. We'd have amazing music with Omashar, Christine Toulouse, who plays harp, Carolina Mikkelsen. It's going to be a very special show. And of course, Christy Michaels, who helps to put these things together. She's been honoring and celebrating Mary Magdalene and the Mary Magdalene Feast Day every year for many, many years. I think this is the third year that we've done something with her around it. So Please join us tomorrow night, Thursday night, and again, Saturday night. Um, and I will put uh, more details into the chat box. And for all of you watching on Facebook, join the Global Peace Tribe. We do three or four shows every week. They are wonderful, and we want you to join us. It's easy. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com, click register, join us, and uh, you'll immediately get the Zoom room links for all of our shows for the next three months. And one of the best parts of the Global Peace Tribe shows is Eleanor, Joy, and Ian, who dance. Um, and we are blessed to have them back with us uh, dancing tonight. Um, uh, it used to be Omashar plays music and they dance, but now it's really they dance and Omashar plays music to their dancing. Uh, it's, you know, things have evolved because this is the awakening world. Take it away, brother. But 
a world that breathes and has won. So I live for this day and no more tomorrows. Each day a new creation, a golden path before us. Our angel wings they open and so. all twinkle beloved omasharth that was a wonderful song and look at everybody moving and grooving and dancing i <laughs> love that it's like my favorite part of the awakening world now is watching all of you doing yeah well it's true <laughs> you know that you know scott every part of the awakening world is my favorite part. <laughs> it's like it's like no matter how um gritty i have been with my day or my week every time i come on to this show i how about halfway through i start to feel really alive and by the end of this show i feel like totally alive and uh, so where was i before the show i don't know i'm just um testamenting there it is no oh, absolutely thank you Omar. and you you've brought so much to this show i'm so grateful to you so grateful i'm going to bring up our special guest jen thank you for your dedication to chief golden light eagle um and to uh, the sunfire fest and michelle anderson we love you and the kitty cat. We thank God for our furry creatures. I'm about to take mine for a walk as soon as we finish. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me on with you all. And you know, I just not to just throw in another shameless plug, but I have a YouTube channel called Moons of Ascension. So if anyone's interested in learning more about some of the star knowledge te teachings that were shared by Chief Golden Light Eagle, I have a lot of videos posted on, on that channel right now of him sharing the teachings of the Makawa Chakpi Wichoka, which are the Earth Star teachings of the 1111. And um, we're in the Firefly Moon right now. So there's a video that shares about what the influences for this particular moon cycle, which you might find really helpful too. So that's on Moons of Ascension. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here with all of you. I love the magic and the love in this space. It's just warm in my heart. So thank you. So, so, so Jen, much. it's uh, Moons of Ascension as a YouTube channel. Moons of Ascension. Cool. Um, you know, and there are a couple of pictures that I want to share that uh, Michelle had sent of Chief Golden Light Eagle. So there he is with uh, some of his tribe. Uh, he's the fellow kind of here in the in the back. Um, and then here's a really lovely photo of him uh, that Michelle also sent. Look at that beautiful man, wow. that beautiful spirit, that beautiful being. Mm -hmm. So um, we feel you, Chief. I'm sure you are in the spirit realm smiling as you see the people that love you and have been so touched by your life and uh thank you thank you thank you all right beautiful global peace tribe i will see you all tomorrow night um or drive to ashland or fly to ashland fly to 
Medford Airport. We'll pick you up at the airport and come to the show. <laughs> we'll see you one way or the other, hopefully. Much love, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so evening. much. I'm going to go to gallery view one more time. Go ahead. You can uh, unmute yourselves and say hello, good night, whatever you wish to say, some of you. Hello, good night. Hello, good night. We, we love, love you. Love. What a <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. We together. Yeah.